a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 23. Rebuilding the hand pump starting with the ram. This hand pump fits in one of the side tanks and is really called the emergency hand pump although you would generally use it for initially pumping cold water into the boiler before lighting the fire. This one is a mess though and what makes it worse is it's had a recent repair that is really not very good. Most of the pump is not too bad though so it's worth repairing it properly I think. The first thing to do though is to get rid of all of the metric nuts and bolts. They don't fit the holes properly and they look ridiculous. The cosmetic appearance of this pump is unimportant as it lives in one of the side tanks and most of the time in the side tank it's immersed in water anyway. Once I removed the linkages I could then pull out the ram and just look at the state of it. It has soft packings fitted to the end. This stuff is called graphited yarn. And although it works perfectly well I think it's a good idea when I make the new ram to use silicone o-rings. The linkages are made from brass so they'll be okay but I'm going to discard the lever and the original ram that you've just seen. The turning on the ram is not very good, the milling of the end is not very good and it's generally horrible, plus it's made from mild steel. Luckily I found a piece of stainless steel in my box of stainless steel bits which is the perfect diameter, all I need to do is shorten it. Over now to the bandsaw to cut the piece to the correct length. It's really important when you machine or cut stainless steel to keep a constant pressure on the stainless steel itself. Over now to the lathe. I fitted the piece of stainless steel in the three jaw chuck and then this part of the clip I'm facing across the end to clean it up. During this video I will mention several times what the main problems are when you machine stainless steel. You need to keep the tool moving at all times with a positive pressure on the stainless steel. I've turned the part round in the chuck and I'm repeating the process at the other end. As you can see this carbide tip tool is cutting very well. The problem with stainless steel is that it work hardens very easily. If you're turning stainless steel or sawing it, if the tool or saw blade rubs, the stainless steel will very quickly work harden and blunt the tool or saw blade. Here's my new stainless steel blank against the old ram, you can see a slight difference already. Now I need to mill a slot in the end of the piece of stainless steel. I've marked the position of the depth for this slot. So it's over to the milling machine and I've put the piece of stainless steel in the rotary table. The milling machine has a depth stop so I'm going to set this so I can cut the slot in the pump ram to the correct depth. This clip shows me setting up the depth stop. Unlike on my drilling machine, the depth stop on the milling machine can be seen in action. It's a very rudimentary device, obviously as I lift it up, when I start to cut the slot it can only go down so far. In this clip you will see me using this stuff, it's WD-40. I find WD-40 to be quite a good cutting lubricant. It's particularly good on metals like aluminium, and because it's coming out of an aerosol, it's a bit cooler than it would be normally if it was just in an oil can. The cutting sequence begins, I'm taking very fine cuts, this is a small milling cutter and if I take too heavy a cut it's just going to go badly wrong. At this stage I'd like to mention that this clip is running at 400%, that's four times normal speed. Depending on the quality of your workshop machinery, I'm really looking at a very average quality machine here. As far as milling machines go, this one could be described as horrible. Made in Taiwan about 35 years ago I think. But I've learnt to live with it, and it's just as well really because it's ideal for making these videos. Occasionally, from the public YouTube videos, I get really stupid comments. A lot of these comments seem to come from elitist and snobby machinists. And as I read these comments, usually just before I delete them, I can't help but feel sorry for the people who've got nothing better to do than to write comments about either the way I do the job or the state of the machinery, etc etc, I'll just sometimes they are a real pain. Recently I've just blocked a serial commenter because the comments were getting to be like essays. He even started sending emails to my business email address. So I blocked him from sending any more silly messages and the sun came out and the birds started singing and now here in the asylum it's a very nice place to be and life is wonderful all the time. 
Even though this video is running at four times the normal speed, it still took quite a long time to mill this slot. This is only a small milling cutter and by taking shallow cuts the internal finish of the slot is much better. As I mentioned a short while back this is not the best quality milling machine in the world but if you are a regular viewer of the videos that I have on YouTube, over 1500 of them, you will see that I frequently use this milling machine and it's made a lot of model steam engines. And the steam engines I've made using this machine seem to work okay. It's also been used to repair quite a lot of them too. This is the sensible engineering part of this video. In other parts of the video I'll be doing some unorthodox engineering. Who taught me how to do this sort of thing? Well it's been a very long winded and slow process. But really it was LBSC's articles in the model engineer. When I first started the LBSC tutorials showed me what I needed to know. At last the slot is cut. Next part of the job, use a needle file to clean off all the burrs and sharp edges. I don't usually file this quickly, the clip is running at twice normal speed. Time for a test fit, and this looks pretty good to me, it fits in all directions and goes in and out, what more can you want? There are many different ways to put a hole through a clevis like this. I'm doing this in sort of an unorthodox way. With the ruler in this position, it supports the end of the work and keeps it square in the machine vise. First of all, with the ruler in at full depth, I drill a hole using a centre drill. But obviously, not all the way through, I do not want a hole in my ruler. So after the centre drilling, when I drill the hole all the way through, I move the ruler out of the way. But it's still supporting the end of the work. Without the ruler, the pressure applied by the twist drill would be very likely to move the part out of alignment. But it can't move at all while the ruler is holding it in this position. Finally, by applying constant pressure on the drill, the stainless steel doesn't work harden and the drill comes through the other side. The diameter of the hole that I drilled in the ram is one imperial size under 3 16 of an inch. Here I'm reaming the hole in the end of the ram using a reamer which is 3 16 of an inch in diameter. I've temporarily fitted what's left of a 2BA bolt and it's a great fit, no slop at all. But I'm not going to use a bolt, I'm going to make a stainless steel stud. A bit like this, but shorter. The first part of this job is successful. This ram is so good it would work without any packing in it at all. In the next episode I will show how I groove this part for the o-ring, I'll be making a proper stud and a completely new handle. But that's it for now, all I'd like to say is as usual, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.